Thank you. So, hi everybody. Great to be here. So, my name is Kevin, and as Gormit was saying, I'm from VMware. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about our own journey in exploring self-serve analytics and how we're using it to create a more insightful enterprise uh, for us and where we began and how we went. I'm going to give you a few uh, little examples of kind of lessons learned, and I'll give you a little preview. There's five. So as we're going through, you can count and see how we're, you know, if we're going. If you like what you hear, then you know that you're so far into the presentation. If you don't like it, you, you'll know you're near, near the end of it. So let me just talk about a little bit about VMware and who we are. So we are one of the world leaders for cloud computing, for uh, desktop virtualization, and for enterprise mobility. Um, this is our 20th anniversary. So we were founded in 1998. And uh, currently, we have about just over half a, half a million customers worldwide, and we're scattered across 50 countries with our headquarters in Palo Alto. But the one thing that the slide won't tell you is that we are very, very data oriented. In fact, we are just mad about data. Uh, data has been a driving force within our company since the day we started. And I've been in the company now for about eight, nine years, and it's just from day one. Get us the data. How do we see data? But Going through all that length of time and the growth that we've had over these past 20 years, we kind of started in a little bit of a tangle. And where we began was kind of with different parts of the organization, sales and partners and marketing, for example, who all had their own set of data. And with that, they created their own data stores. And sometimes these were databases, sometimes these were Excel files, and sometimes these were sitting on a server or a text file or whatever. And as over time began, we kind of found that a database would feed a file that would then go on feed another database that would go on feed another file that would give us another database system. And we started to see a proliferation of Excel throughout the organization. Now, I like Excel. It's one of the, I always make sure it's there when we need it because it's a fantastic tool and there's no doubt about it. But Excel was becoming the answer to all of our data data questions. And on top of that then, we started thinking, well, how do we visualize all this data? We've got tons and tons of Excel files dotted around the network. Let's start putting them into PowerPoint. So it was starting to get messy. We were spending a lot of time putting together files, putting together PowerPoints, getting our information together. And for our leaders, there was another issue that was coming out of this. But before I talk about that, I'm going to go back in time a small bit. This, is, this chap here I'm going to show you is not a current member of the staff, I rest assured. This is Andrew Lang. He was a Scottish poet, and he was a, he was a critic. And he actually saw the problem that our leadership was facing with data so long ago, about 100 years ago. And he was talking about leaders in particular. And when he looked at it, he referred to a lot of leaders at the time as saying that they used statistics like a drunken man will use a lamppost just for support but not for any illumination. And for our leadership, it was a little bit like that. They were coming in and getting their numbers and saying, well, here's our figure for this half. And then someone else came and says, no, that's not a figure. Or, this is the figure. Said, well, hang on, what did you use for this? And methodologies were different. Nothing was right. And we were kind of using data just to support our own beliefs rather than what the data was trying to tell us and where we wanted to go with that. So with that, we kind of looked and assessed and formed together a new uh, data organization in the company. And we wanted to sign a st set up to kind of enable self-serve uh, from a sanctions, with sanctioned single sources of truth. We were going to collapse all of these disparate data marts around. But as time went on, then we kind of said, well, actually, there's more to this than just self-serve. We also want to digitize all of the files, all of the PowerPoints, all of the Excels. How do we take away the time that it's taken to prepare these every day, week, month, quarter? So we wanted to open up these new possibilities for the business. So to get to kind of first part of my list of what we learned and what's important for an insightful enterprise, it's people. Very simple. In this day and age, we're all hearing so much about AI and machine learning and, and models and so forth, but people really is the driving force behind this. And we spoke to our people and we said, well, what makes sense? How do we control this information? And they came back with five different answers. And for a lot of them, I think a lot of this is probably a no-brainer in a way, but it's refreshing to hear it coming from the people who need this information. So we wanted sanctioned sources of data. We didn't want to have three versions of the one data. We didn't have two versions of another. 
We also wanted to kind of open up our business insights. We wanted to see what's happening now. We don't want to see what the picture was yesterday or last week or last quarter. We know what's happened. We've gone through that. So we want to see what's happening now. We also wanted our data to be secure. Obviously, there's a little risk with Excel. You might end up with a employee who perhaps isn't too happy, who puts a little USB stick in their pocket and goes off with your customer list. Obviously, we don't want that. Uh, and then we wanted to start looking at, well, where can we go? What else can we see that's coming? Let's not be so much reactive, but where is the data telling us we're, we're leading to and give us some line of sight? And finally, we want it to be interactive. PowerPoints and pivots are fantastic. We don't want to get involved with this. We want to be able to sit down in meetings and discussions and strategy and look at, say, okay, well, what is the, what is happening? And interact with that data to do that. So for us, very much kind of what, what we wanted as an organization kind of summed up into those five little bullet points. The second aspect of this, and it was so, so critical from the early days, was governance, data governance and effective data process. Uh, I feel like I really, I'd love to hire this guy actually to just come around and point at all of our laptops and tell us where the data isn't right. But uh, for us, it was a challenge from the get-go. We had accounts and we had data for our accounts that were labeled don't use this account. And then we'd have another identical account name saying, use this account. And then a third one saying, no, don't use that account, use this account. Because it was making it very easy for our reps and so on just to go in and create a new account, tie it to a new opportunity, and let them run with it. So we had to bring control into data. And I could probably take up another 20, 30 minutes in terms of talking about data governance and what our master data team did. But suffice to say that they spend a lot of time getting control of that data, ensuring that the relationships are there, that all the various disparate data sets around could start to be interconnected and to, and to get more value out of it. But that we had trust. You know, that is the fundamental aspect for this, that we could trust what our data had. And looking at that, I suppose, we kind of started to build up our enterprise data warehouse. We can see kind of some of the different things here. So we have some sources along here. So all of the various different sources that we had kind of now kind of cleaned up, bringing it into our enterprise data warehouse. And we brought in some rules on our data, how we want that data to interact, and also starting to bring in some models and kind of sequences, predictive modeling, uh, advanced analytics, and so forth in there. So we're getting all this data in there, which is great, but we're still needing a way to kind of get it out to our users, to, you know, democratizing it, so forth. And that takes me to number three, which is technology. Um, we looked at lots of technology and looked at lots of different solutions out there. I'm going to talk about one. It's not our only one, but I think it's one that's probably been the most revolutionary for us so far, uh, which is with Tableau and Tableau Server. So I'm going to give you a little model of how we kind of set this up, a kind of a basic aspect of it. So here we have our data, our data warehouse and all of our different sources of truth all going in and consolidating into that data warehouse. We have our rules then for interaction, and we're now bringing in our advanced analytical models and so forth. Now, all that data needs to challenge out, go out, and that goes into what we've set up as obviously a Tableau server. And our goal with this, of course, is that we're going to have some published dashboards. We're going to visualize a lot of this data. We're going to make it easy for those who need to make decisions to quickly assess and understand what the state of the business is and make decisions accordingly. Now, to do that, we have to look at our entire user community. We have operations teams, we have analytics experts, we have data scientists, and we have business leaders all trying to kind of get value out of this. So for us, what we did was we, we used Tableau Server as kind of our central point. It offered us an ability to take core data sources, so particular aspects of data from our enterprise data warehouse, put it onto Tableau Server, and give it a certification mark. This is the data you can use. This is the data that is clean. This is the data that matches your expectations. It also gave us a bit of security, and of course, we get connectivity and performance aspects and interacting using that data. From there, then, we kind of looked at our power users. A lot of the operations teams had analysts that were churning and putting together data in Excels and building formulas and so forth. So we gave them Tableau Desktop and allowed them to go in and start doing some data blending. They then can connect back to server and they can utilize the core data sources. So they're allowed an element of innovation here and kind of ex get a bit more exploration. Uh, and finally, then we have our end users who are kind of really going to be our collaboration. They're the folks who are going to really give it the plus or minus of whether it's a, it's a workable solution. And as well as that, then our powered users can con contribute to the content of what we're producing for these dashboards. So in a high level view, that's kind of our model in terms of how we're starting to democratize this data. But to kind of give it a little bit more of a context to it, 
what we ended up building was actually two environments. One was a self-serve environment where we can take our data from the enterprise data warehouse, we can have our core data sets from Tableau Server, and then we can also start to blend in other data sources, perhaps that aren't exactly clean or new, CSVs, text files, Excel, again, you know, where new sources of data are being uh, produced by different parts of the business. And we handed that over to both power users and a few end users and say, go in there and explore. Do some innovation, look at what the data is. You will get updates from our enterprise data warehouse, uh, so you can use the latest data that you have, but with one small caveat, which is that you won't get that update as frequently as you might on a production box. This is very much a a playground for information for data and insights. But what we looked at then was having a process in terms of, okay, once we get to a point of maturity with this self-serve model, how we can bring that across into a production environment. So obviously we had to kind of talk about our support and maintenance processes, our release cycles of transferring this information over to what we might have in a production environment. And a production environment is very similar, but has some slight differences. It's still got your data warehouse connections, we still have our, our core data sources that we talked about, but a little bit different to this, the new data sources perhaps that the business use have been cleaned and sanctioned and approved for use, and you'll find that those get moved across into our production environment. Our power users can connect to it, our end users connect to it, and they're looking at the latest data, being able to interact and, and look at it from a visual point of view. So that's our self-serve. So I guess at this stage, we've solved everything, I suppose. You know, business can go and look at the data and we can see what's happening. Uh, we've cleaned it all up. There's nothing more to do. We can just take six months off for the summer, which is brilliant. I'm all for that. Well, no, not quite, of course. We still have an element of work involved in doing this, which is engagement. Business doesn't stop just because you got the data and you got the systems in place. It keeps moving on. The second you feel that you've climbed that mountain and you've solved that impossible challenge, they've got a new one ready for you. Brilliant. I love what you did with this dashboard. I appreciate it took you might take taking you some time. I've got a new question though. So we need to kind of keep engaging. We need to understand this. And for us and our group and our team, we've actively involved ourselves with all of the business units and functions. We're sitting on their meetings. We're involved in their calls. We're trying to understand more about their business so we can start looking at what we can do to help encourage them that. Um, but from an innovation standpoint, and this is a very light chart, and it's kind of a little bit hard to see, but the innovation standpoint with Tableau is almost like a big bang for us in terms of data. We have hundreds of charts and dashboards that have been created across the company for many use cases. Some are quite disposable. We use them, present them, and they're done. Others, the business users keep, keep active and kind of reviewing it, and they go into looking at these things on a quarterly basis. So we've really much churned a kind of a case of now making it more visual and more active and more interactive for folks, and the creativity doesn't end. We, we have, you know, we, we keep up to date. We are looking at all the various ways of representing it and being challenged constantly by our, 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 our business units, you know, what else can we get out of this? How do we start looking to the future? How do we bring in our more machine learning? How do we start to make it easy to condense? So we have that, but we still have hundreds of PowerPoint slides out there. It's not a finished task by any, any means. And for a lot of that now, we're looking at our senior leaders and executives who get a state of the business every quarter. But they might, for example, sit down for a few hours, go through a number of slides, and start to say, OK, I've got some questions now. Thanks for giving me a sense of what's happening. And they're doing this every quarter, every month. And this, in turn, is involving a lot of people having to produce these decks still every quarter, every month, and to check it and make sure each figure is right, and the Excel is right, and the data is OK. So this kind of takes me to the last kind of main point I want to talk about, which is expertise. We still rely on a data analyst or data scientists and visualization tools to provide that expertise. How do we get away from a sort of that PowerPoint aspect to it? Uh, and, and this is, I suppose, is more critical. We as data teams and data, data leaders and visualization people can very much guide them to, to that. You know, we kind of see this. This is a great example. Every quarter is a team that sits down for a number of hours and they look through PowerPoint slides and they have everything printed out and they have things on screen like this and we'll have a commentary on the side and questions will immediately follow from their leadership. How do I do this? 
what, what's happening, what does that number mean, why are we seeing a spike, let's say, in one quarter, why are we seeing percentages highlight another. And the teams generally will go, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll look through this and then we'll come back to you at the end of the quarter and we'll do that. Here is a little bit different because we've taken, using with Tableau, we've taken the same view and we've tableauized it and we've put a number of filters in here. And that's starting to create a mindset and change in terms of our insight because now our leaders are looking going, okay, what does that number mean? And we're immediately telling them on the spot by interacting with the dashboard the reason why. So they're getting answers in the same meeting, not later, not a week or so, right now at the point. And that is now starting to kind of foster that growth upwards for us in terms of our execs and our leadership who are now looking at scorecarding and ways of keeping track of what the business is doing and looking at what we, how we bring that forward for future. There's another example here in terms of dashboards that we've had that used to be done in Excel. It's a little bit more of an enterprise type dashboard, I think, looking at kind of, you know, your number of cases that are closed and what is the status. I mean, even if you took a glance of it without going into detail, you'll know from color coding and looking at it, okay, well, I can see that we've closed the majority of our cases. I see that our time for responding is good. Uh, the average days we might need to work on a little bit, but we're in a healthy, healthy way. I don't need to dev into it too much. We've got people will do that anyway, but we can see straight away how it is. And that's the impact of, of having this information and making it visual out there. And Tableau has been a fantastic example for that. It's not the only tool we use. We use other things. We've got web intelligence out there for analysts who want to go into a lot of detail. But I think of opening up the possibilities that have been there for us, uh, this has certainly been very, very helpful. So to sum it all up, really, kind of to wrap it up very quickly, people is the main first point. We all do this for people. But we need to ensure that our governance is, is, is accurate. Our processes are in place. Everyone learns that the first day they start learning computer science, garbage in, garbage out, but our governance process perhaps is going to help cleaning up that and ensuring that the garbage doesn't come out and it's, it's dealt with from, from its source. Technology, look for a technology solution that offers you the best breath. Let it open to your leadership that they can see the insights and the potential that's there. Let your analysts be able to interact with it. Let them kind of you know, test things out, try it. And when they have questions, engage. Let them know what's coming. Use your team as well to provide the information to them. And you'll find then that that expertise will start to kind of churn across from all of it, not just from a data scientist point of view, but from a business side of view. And when you have that business side of view, then as we're finding, we're starting to ask, ask questions and come up with answers of things we haven't even thought or dreamt of before. And we're looking at where we're going down our next path and where our journey wants to take us for the next number of years. I will say, kind of wrapping it up very quickly, this is evolutionary. It's not something we can just sit on now and say we're done. We have to keep evolving. We've seen so much, even the last 12 months, the drive for AI, the drive for machine learning, the drive for IoT. It's going to get louder and louder and louder. And providing these insights and using it and getting it back to your leaders and to your managers and to your bosses, you know, that's going to become harder and harder. But by having aspects of this and looking at it through these five points, you've got a very good basis to start off with in order to succeed. So it's evolutionary. It will always keep going. But that's part of the fun of it, I'm sure, and that's why we all are here today. So thank you very much.